The New Zealand Warriors in 2018, uh, what do I like about them? I like the fact that it's not the New Zealand Warriors of past, it looks like it's going to be the New Zealand Warriors of the future. Uh, based on their round one performance um, and the way they look physically, I think the, the New Zealand Warriors are in for a very big year. Uh, again, kudos to the club and to Stephen Kearney for acknowledging the fact that they had a, a flaw in their high performance and have got someone in um, to rectify that problem and it's already paying dividends visibly and going by their performance on uh, Saturday over here in, in Perth. Uh, I hope there's big things in store for the Warriors in 2018. Um, they had a lot of they had a lot of big off-season signings, uh, seven in fact, but I, I, I'm going to mention three of them that I think that are going to be important to, to the performance of the team in 2018. Um, one of them is Tohu Harris. Uh, in Tohu Harris, you get a a back rower, um, an edge player, a ball player um, that's big and strong, um, has good late footwork at the line. Uh, he has this ability to to get between defenders and as he gets bet between defenders, he frees up his arms and he gets offloads, uh, which is beneficial to his, his centre and as well as, um, you know, people following up in the middle, either Roger or, or a half. Um, he... He is such a big body and he's, with his footwork and his speed um, in tacking positions one-on-one -on -one close to the line, he's going to be very hard to stop. Um, so if they can give him that ability to, to attack an edge uh, with time and space, with good clean ball, uh, have the ability to weigh up his options and, and, and see what he gets out of it, um, I think he's going to be very good for them. Um, the other thing that... Tohu Harris uh, brings to the Warriors table is um, obviously big game experience from his time at Melbourne. Um, Semi-final football, grand finals, um, you know, world club challenges. And then his international career playing for New Zealand. Um, so the, the level of professionalism, his work ethic, um, his ability to, uh, to prepare and then perform um, is going to be a major plus. For, for the Warriors and for a lot of the, the younger kids coming through there and the not so seasoned uh, NRL players, I hope that they're smart enough to uh, to learn off of Tohu Harris while he's at the club. Um, the other player is, um, and has also come out of a, a Melbourne's system, is in Adam Blair. Now, Adam Blair um, is probably not noted as being a uh, uh, you know, a robust go-forward front rower. Um, but in him, um, what you get is not only his experience, his big game experience, he's a current New Zealand captain, um, you get a tireless work ethic, you get um, a competitive nature, you get, uh, you know, very good ball playing ability, especially short of his hip, um, close to the line. Um, he has... The ability to get a fast play of the ball because um, when he when he takes the line on he has a little bit of a jink in his in his run he doesn't cop a lot of shots so that gives him the ability to get to his stomach and get fast play of the ball um, and like Tohu Harris he brings um, a professionalism to the club that I think is probably lacked over the last couple of years um, where the culture can learn off these other players that have been in other environments that have had success, learn off the, off them and to make them better so that when they go out and play, that they're performing at their best. So he, he, he's, his experience is invaluable to them. Um, the other big signing, and it's a no-brainer, is Blake Green. Um, you know, we saw on Friday night's game um, with the Sea Eagles having important it was um, you know that he'd be in a side like that it would have taken a lot of pressure off DCE um, and then you look at his performance here on Saturday night against the Rabbitohs uh, and it just goes to show that you know, his game management his, uh, his vision his game awareness um, his level headedness and composure 
under pressure. He's he's kicking accuracy. Um, he's disciplined to stick to structure and to to stick to game plans is a major plus. Um, so, you know, the signing in Blake Green is a is a major major plus for them. It's going to give them um, uh, the ability to win games through. Um, being disciplined and being conservative when they need to be. Um, the the beneficiary of the Blake Green signing is uh, obviously Sean Johnson. Uh, in Sean Johnson, you have uh, one of the most dynamic runners of football, one of the most skillful players in the competition. Um, you know, on his day, uh, some of the things he does are completely uh, outstanding. Uh, you know, he blows, he blows you away with how skillfully he can be. Um, but we haven't seen a lot of that in Sean Johnson over the last couple of years. Um, Blake Green will allow him to start running the football again. Um, it'll take away his, his kick pressure. Uh, Sean Johnson is not a noted accurate kicker. Uh, and under pressure, um, you know, Sean can kick into touch on the full, uh, he can kick over the top of his, his, his leaping wingers and centres and go dead. He can kick dead in the end goal when he's going for a repeat set. So, you know, sometimes his, his touch on the football can be too hard. Um, you know, Blake Green's kicking game can, can relieve a lot of that pressure off um, Sean Johnson. Um, when he's running, when his running game is on, uh, he's very hard to contain because he's so good on his feet. He's fast, but the step that he that he has uh, makes people look silly, like grasping at air. Um, so, you know, again, Blake Green is a major plus to Sean Johnson and to the, to the Warriors in the sense that it gives him a, a half that can lead the, the team around the park and allow Sean Johnson to do what Sean Johnson does best is, you know, play football through vision, see what's in front of him and play. Um, the other thing I liked, or I'm looking forward to, is um, is the performances of uh, David Fusatura and, and Solomon Akata. Um, I thought, thought they had wonderful World Cup campaigns. Uh, in David Fusatura, you have a massive human being um, that's big, fast, uh, and strong. Be very hard to contain close to the line. He's a very good finisher. He's a good leaper too, so that will benefit the kicking game or the crossfield kicking game of Blake Green. Um, and hopefully they'll score a few tries off that. And Solomon Akata, obviously uh, a different player in stature, very um, uh, low centre of gravity, but short, stocky and powerful, um, you know, He's going to be another player on an edge, um, you know, close to the line. Going to be very hard to stop. Um, the the way that Isaac Luke and Roger Tuivasa-Shek have come back under the new high performance training program over the off season, the way that Alex Corvo has got these two looking reminds me of the way that they looked at their previous club when they were fit and healthy and playing dynamic football. Isaac Luke on Saturday looked like the player that was running around at South Sydney in 2014 when they won the comp. His speed out of dummy half, his tenacity and just ability to stay in the game energetically was very noticeable. He's, 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 he's running, so... Um, his ability to weigh up options, uh, defenders on the court on the ground, tired defenders, spot defenders, you know, getting at them was was excellent. Um, if he can maintain the level of fitness, the energy, and his performances over the year, I guarantee that Isaac Luke will be the number nine for New Zealand as a representing player this year. Uh, just want to see him get back to that that style of football that, that he was playing at South. Because the last couple of years, he just looked like he was carrying too much weight. Uh, he wasn't moving very freely. He looked unfit. So when he got tired, he started falling off tackles that he probably wouldn't have fallen off. He would have held on. Um, and 
Yeah, the other with with Roger too is that um, Roger looks a lot faster and leaner, so he's not carrying as much weight or load through his body. Um, his speed looks like it's it's back, um, but his energy and then playing fullback, um, you need to have a very high level of fitness, and um, you know his ability to pop up in places, especially you know through offloads. Uh, either through Adam Blair or Tohu Harris or forwards cut through the middle, um, you know he's going to be very hard to contain this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, Roger Tuivasa-Shek and Isaac Luke hit form, uh, the type of form that we saw from them in, in when they were firing it in a few years ago at their other clubs. Um, with their with their concerns or what they dislike, what I dislike about the Warriors. Um, it's not that I dislike it, I'm, I'm more worried. And I, th I think there's a lot of people out there after round one um, that will have this train of thought. And, and, and what it is, is just, it's psychological conditioning from past seasons where we think, um, you know, they're gonna resort back to the type of team that we've known them to be in the past. Um, and you can't help a lot of people for thinking that because uh, that's, that's normal. Uh, I hope they don't resort back to that ad lib low percentage style of football that they've played in the past under pressure um, and the conservative composed Blake Green can keep them on track uh, from a discipline point of view. Um, the other thing is, and I say this um, I say this because like like anything in life, you always have to weigh up if Murphy's Law takes place, if Blake Green was to go down with an injury, and I hope he doesn't, has Sean Johnson as a player over the last couple of years learnt the lesson and is intelligent enough to understand that he can't be the style of footballer that he has in the past, that he needs to step up to the plate, be responsible and accountable for getting this team around the park conservatively and not do all the silly things that, he, that, that he's been known to do uh, under pressure. Should injury strike Blake Green uh, and Sean Johnson is then given the responsibility of directing this team around the park, I hope he's learned enough to do the right thing by him, that's all. Um, the, other, the other thing, and this goes to their conditioning and the way they've been prepared, Obviously, they're, they're different now. When in the past, they, you know, they were probably carrying a bit of weight. Their lack of conditioning um, would make them give away penalties or make mistakes. And when they're in a better conditioned state, mentally, they won't be making those types of mistakes so or giving away those types of penalties. So, you know, that's another concern. I have... High hopes for the Warriors in 2018. I think they can they can go really well. Um, you know they seem to have a little bit of depth in the areas that they they, they can cover. Um, it's just a matter of them as a as a team and now as a staff um, learning the lessons of the past, putting all that stuff to bed. New future. The Warriors to finish seventh in 2018.